Hi everyone, it's day 51 of the Vendée Globe and if you ever wanted to remind yourself just how tough the Southern Ocean is, then it was a bit of footage that came back from Boris Herman today as he's surfing in the Southern Ocean. And he's only a few days away from getting out of Cape Horn, but you know, at this moment in time, it's not the time to take any risks. And you can see in, in his expression, he's pretty uncomfortable with the boat surfing along at speeds in excess of 30 knots. And then I don't know where to go. I like for the next hundred miles is straight, but then I could try to take a south route or north route. I'm not sure yet. Woo! So I don't like her going steady knots, it's not necessary. Just go steady. Steady 20, please. So I'll talk later. Oh, God. Pretty stressful for him, but uh, yeah, just hold on there, Boris. You've only got a few more days and then you'll be out of the south and, uh, and back into the Atlantic. For the lead duo, they'll pass Cape Horn on Saturday night, uh, followed by Boris and the Peloton a, few, a day or so later, setting up what will be a thrilling climb back up the Atlantic for that fleet. On Monday, I'm going to be joined by Will Harris to look at some of the options for the leaders as they look to make the final stage of the race north back to Les Abdelon. For those in good shape with no known issues, they'll want to pick a route to glory. Historically, there'll be more casualties in the Atlantic as skippers push their boats and themselves to breaking point in the quest to win this incredible race. Let's have a look at the last 48 hours and just remind ourselves where they were. So this was a situation as we left off uh, 48 hours ago, the lead two duo were just tackling this depression with the, the sort of main bulk of the, the lead group just a couple of hundred miles behind. And if we just watch the, uh, the tracker forward, we'll just remind ourselves what happened over the last 24 hours. So that depression moves off to the south and, uh, and Yannick um, he tries to stay in the best of the pressure, most of the fleet all heading back down to the ice line. And he's now just you know, really covering the uh, the boats behind. He's got a really nice lead of, uh, you know, 120 miles or so. And um, he just wants to stay, you know, in the better pressure and, uh, and certainly between them and, and Cape Horn. So that's the situation as it currently is now. Uh, and, you know, very favorable for Yannick. There's a, it looks like some soft high pressure um, above to the north. And he wants to be down there sailing a fast route along the ice gate shortest distance towards the Cape. Um, I suspect all of the lead boats will probably dive back down south to avoid that, uh, that high pressure ridge coming down. Further back in the fleet, we can see the, the mid group and Armel Tripon is still making you know, huge speeds in the south and he's now past another scalp, not far behind the next boat. And I fully expect before the Southern Ocean's over, he's gonna be back into this main pack. At least that's what he's gonna be hoping to achieve. Further back, uh, we've got Pip and uh, her little group of sailors, and they're again, you know, being squeezed by this this light pressure system here, uh, right up against the ice gate, trying to stay in the best of the pressure. And then at the back of the fleet, uh, we've got uh, we've got Ari and um, and and Sebastian. Uh, Sebastian's quite far behind now. Um, I'm not sure if he's still heading towards. Australia uh, at the moment doesn't look that that's the case um, but good news for Sam Davis who um, although not officially racing is uh, is you know, quite close to Ari and uh, and the next boat so she's in, in good company there which is um, certainly good for her 
well-being and uh, and safety and so on. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the weather forecast for the league group as they're uh, on the final stretch to, to Cape Horn. And you can see here that the pretty good westerlies, that low pressure, um, disappeared to the south now. Uh, but up behind them here is another low here. And that one is the one that they need to watch out for. It's going to give them pretty strong conditions as they go around Cape Horn as that uh, rolls in down this way. Let's just uh, let's watch that track forward. So this is lunchtime today. Uh, let's go into tomorrow uh, and you can see lunchtime. Here's here the low here. Um, the bulk of the, the guys below here are in quite light breeze and that enables uh, uh, Yannick and uh, Charlie to to potentially extend a little bit here from from the lead group we go into friday and uh, you can see now the low pressure uh, really quite quite deep to the to the north of them again for for yannick and for charlie uh, they're just managing to stay ahead of this front and uh, in really strong northwesterly winds which you know putting some really good miles on the uh, on the peloton here so we're going to saturday and this is the moment when we should see the lead boats uh, past cape horn probably saturday night and uh, and thomas not too far behind um, and then a little bit of a gap of sort of a couple hundred miles so the following day sunday into monday the uh, the main group going to go around pretty much as a pack all together okay and then just a quick look beyond cape horn you see what they've got to contend with. So the Falkland Islands to decide whether to go to the east or the west of the Falklands. And my hunch is they'll probably want to stay close to the ice, get ice, ice line and just ride that uh, that pressure. There's a little um, a little low pressure system forming. I think we can see on Sunday. Uh, if I just take the arrow, so a little low pressure forming up here which um, may well give them an option to get uh, to get some northing in around the top of that as this depression comes across their track. So if we look through into Monday uh, and you can see it's sort of forming up and then into Tuesday you can see it may just give them a little opportunity to get around the top of this in between the pressure here the the high and the, and the low uh, and that may give them an opportunity to get up through here but of course from that point on they've still got to cross this this light patch this light ridge to get across to the St. Helena high so not um, certainly not looking easy at the moment so that's it for tonight hope you enjoyed that uh, I won't be here on New Year's Day uh, but I will be back on Monday when I'm joined by Will Harris and we'll be looking at the South Atlantic and the uh, options for the teams as they head north back into the Atlantic on their way home to Le Sable de Londres.